Today we're going to talk about doing watercolor batik. We're using rice paper for this process. Rice paper has some nice fibers going through it and it has a smooth side and a rough side. And we're going to make sure that we do our work on the smooth side today. Um, I have a piece here that is about the size that I want and I'm feathering the edges of this paper. Um, to do that, I wet the edge and I take a, a tool of some kind. Today I have a, a grapefruit spoon and then I, I just kind of go along the edge and pull some of this fiber away. You don't want to go too deep or it, it will make, a, make it more jagged than than I want here. This is kind of how it works. So, move that away and the edge is a little bit feathery. I have my rice paper is dry now. You kind of want it dry when you start to do this. Um, I'm going to have the smooth side up. I have a design that I drew yesterday and it's a picture of a yellow lady slipper because I happen to like wildflowers. Uh, this is small so I think I'll just put this on my clipboard to hold it. But as you can see here um, this rice paper is quite transparent, so if you put your design behind, you can, you can see it. Can you see that design is showing through? I have a, a permanent pen here. It's, this happens to be a Sharpie, and it's got a very fine point. I'm going to trace this picture onto the rice paper and you have to keep moving quite quite rapidly. You can't dawdle or you'll have a big blob. But you could even do this tracing from a coloring book. It's pretty easy. We definitely want to have the smooth side up when we're doing this. Okay, um, I have some freezer paper here and I'm going to put this freezer paper down first with the waxy side up. And that's going to help us because this water likes to travel when we're working with it. And so the freezer paper helps us. I'm just going to tape the corners down to make it behave a little bit for me. Now, when we do this, I like to put some paper towel down and several layers of Kleenex because the watercolor really travels on this rice paper and we want to blot it up. We don't, don't want it bleeding all over the paper. And if this gets too wet and we, we change it, put some dry stuff underneath. That ought to do it. We have our paper with with the design on it and I guess you could tape that down if you wanted to. I don't really want to because of my frayed edges. Um, that frayed edge is, a, is an option. You can go with a nice crisp edge if you like to. And you just kind of start start painting but um, you have to be careful not to get too close to your lines because 
it can just follow those fibers and really bleed. But mm. well, most of the people who do this already know how to paint with watercolor, so you have your own techniques, I'm sure. And I make it rather make the watercolor quite intense. But you have to be careful of your edges or it'll it'll just kind of scoot right past the edge where you don't want it. Whoop. Got a little more than I'm just going to press that down and uh, then the the Kleenex blots it out when when I'm afraid things are going to run. This uh, piece that I I finished the watercolor part and it's dry. In fact, if you want to hurry up the drying process, you can always use a hair dryer and that goes pretty fast. Um, sometimes I like to enhance the piece with a little bit of water, with, with a little bit of um, colored pencil. This particular wildflower has a lot of little lines in the leaves and if I use a colored pencil, it, it can kind of make those stand out a little bit more. It's just something I do. Not necessary, but sometimes it works for me to just touch it up a little bit with my colored pencil. Now we're ready to begin the waxing process. And one of the things I must mention is that wax is very flammable. You can't leave it unattended. It can catch fire. Um, we can use an electric fry pan and put water in it to, um, and I, I use a tin can with just paraffin wax in there, and um, set the can in water. You have to keep adding water because the thing likes to evaporate. Um, we use old paint brushes. Once you use a paintbrush and wax, you can't use it for anything else. So you have to decide what you're going to sacrifice. Um, when the wax is melted, we can kind of paint with it like we're doing a watercolor again. Um, sometimes we need to get this part of the brush warm because the wax likes to... Um, it likes to harden uh, up. I'm going to carefully wax this and I've I've got some uh, butcher paper underneath too because this will bleed through. And we don't want to go real close to the um, outline because we can get halos. Unless, unless you want a halo, you want to stay back just a little bit. And just cover up the colored parts for this first process. Once I get this all co covered, it doesn't take very long for the wax to harden. And then we can get on with our next step. We only want the wax where we've colored our image at this point. Now, we're just about through covering this image with wax. Um, I did go over my outline just a little bit in a couple of places, so that will make a halo because uh, it won't take any other added color once I cover it with the wax. So, but one of the things I like to do it adds a little bit of interest anyway is I just take some wax on my brush and just spatter it. So 
so there will be some white spots and it just makes it a little bit interesting. It also kind of forgives you if, if you went over the edge a little bit. Um, I do have butcher paper underneath. I don't know if I mentioned that before or not, but that keeps things from going through. I probably have enough sprinkles on there. This You just have to keep dipping in the, the hot wax because it hardens up on your brush. But I think, I think we're through with this first waxing process. Um, if you turn the paper over, you you can kind of see the wax has gone through uh, to the other side. And um, we can, we can uh, use our watercolor again. We're going to get our Kleenex under there and uh, our paper towel again. <clears throat> 